Every time I hear Jordan Peterson, it makes more sense because it's normally in interviews. That's what <laughs> it's normally in interviews where people have aggressively gone after him, and he knows what he's talking about, and he just kicks it back. Um, there was one me and Peter were listening to two days ago, and he was Jordan Peterson was between somebody that was a feminist from the Labour Party, and that's how she described herself as a feminist, and a alleged journalist because there was nothing actually was recognised that she'd actually done any journalism and this is why me and Peter are talking about it, it says she can still be a journalist because if she studied journalism it makes her a journalist even though she's never actually done any journalism um, but the, the the point being is pushing that aside we're talking about equality of outcome because equality of outcome is difficult to measure beyond the fact that you've got 12 boxes of this and 12 boxes of that. Are they the same? Yes. Was it done in the same hours? Yes. That, that's equality to me. Equality of outcome. Now, the Labour woman, and I say Labour woman because I can't remember her name, and that's how much of an impact she had on me and such a positive impact. Um, she couldn't even describe what her role was before. <laughs> that was she said I was something and I'm like that's not a job title you know it's like I was like the Christmas fairy and it's like it, it was just like a very made up title um, but then she said she was so proud that she was doing something to do with feminism or whatever and it's just like you know, as if she was patting herself on the back and obviously nobody else knows what she was talking about beyond herself and maybe some other people have actually read or seen it but she was on about how the equality of outcome was irrelevant in the sense that uh, men may find this the equality of outcome is not the same but they will get other benefits in the long term and I was just like this is a bit like bloody British Labour talking about their finances relating to the, the police force. What, what are you replacing them with? What, what, I get X salary. So if I'm giving you some of mine to accommodate the fact that you can complete the task at the same time, where's my benefit to this? You benefit. I don't benefit whatsoever. And this is the sort of thing you get, and that is socialism for me. And this is why I keep bringing up feminist socialism, because it's, it's far worse. Socialism is bad enough in the context of the way people use it. My version of socialism is very, very simple. You can have socialism as long as everybody works for the benefit of all. You can't have socialism where people expect to be carried by others because it's often the ones that want to be carried are the ones that dictate to everybody else what they should be giving <laughs> and that's what we were talking about here. And I was reading an article today relating to um, the common market, sorry not the common market, open market and socialism and the, how the two differ and how one's better than the other and so you know. I was going through a lot of it in and some of the things were very, very true in there. Because, for example, the United States, um, the ability to become an elected power there is much easier than a socialist country. In the sense, there may be a two-party system, but the ability to actually have an opinion and stress it and talk about it and go political, yeah, it'll make sense in a minute, I'll tell you. I know some people are going to say, well, there's only this and this, and the UK is the same, but it's, you could join one of those parties and have a bit more of a broader context in the sense that you do have one side and the other, but you can still debate things. In socialist countries, and this is why everybody is bloody talks to me that socialists keep saying there has never been a socialist country, because well, if they were in power, they'd do it differently. And I'm like, but then you'd be exactly the same as everybody else, because that's what happens. Socialism is a failure. Um, but in socialist countries, you couldn't do it. Look at Venezuela, Cuba, Russia. Doesn't matter which ones you look at, they're single party countries. They, socialism likes to say that they're the party for all. They're not. There's only one view and it's their own. Feminism, socialism. And also socialism generally. It's not about the bigger picture or the benefit of all or the voting. The open market allows the voting to 
choose who is right and wrong. You do not find that in socialist countries. You find it's a one-party system, predominantly. Um, even if the um, capitalist world is not functioning correctly, which it isn't because it's so easily bought with lobbying, in my opinion, um, it's still more open than things like what's going on in Venezuela. Uh, Venezuela's got some serious problems. A friend of mine was actually trying to fuel his truck the other day, and it's, although it's a f little bit of a funny story, it was actually reality. He was just getting some fuel for his truck, and the amount of local currency is phenomenal that you need. I think he, I can't remember how much he was cashing in, but he ended up with something like 18 million of the local currency. Um, but anyway, before he'd done that, he went to pay for the fuel with his bank card. They wouldn't take it because the bank charge fees were higher than the actual fuel. And he wasn't near a bank because this is why he's filling up the truck to go. So what happened is there was somebody else with him. He gave the woman behind the counter a few bananas and she was more than happy to take the bananas. The bananas were worth more than the fuel in the, in the truck. How bizarre is that? And that's the state of a socialist country. Because corruption runs rampant. Not right, rampant. It's the next layer up. Um, so bear that in mind. And this is, uh, I know I'm a bit off tangent now, but this is why I see a lot of the stuff what Jordan Peterson is talking about is very much correct. And a lot of the stuff where people argue against him you see massive holes in their stories, but also when you start looking at things like that, where people go, well, we're the socialist this, or we're the, you start to think, well, hang on a minute. What is it you actually want? And when you start looking into it, you start to see these ain't people you want in power. These are, these are dangerous people. These are part and parcel of the problem. And this is why I'm becoming a major fan of Jordan Peterson. And like I said, I'll put the link below if you want to get his audio books or the book. But definitely it's worth a read. Thanks for watching.